Hey guys, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. You guys know the deal this morning. We're gonna be riding to the motorcyclist office in Southern California on KTM's 2020 R. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. Well guys, here it is, KTM's 2020 Duke R. This is KTM's new upper spec premium middleweight class naked bike. It is based off the 790 Duke that was introduced a couple of years ago. Basically what KTM's done is it's given it the works treatment on this 890 Duke R. It's got a higher spec engine, higher spec suspension, bigger, stronger, more powerful brakes, better electronics. Look at the styling on this bike. God, these bikes look so good. I love the shape of the exhaust. I love the thick aluminum swing arm. I love how the engine's just hanging there in the open air. I also like how compact this engine is. This parallel twin engine configuration is very, very small in a good way. It allows chassis designers to put the engine where they need for proper packaging, proper handling, and making for a light, nimble chassis. But enough talking about this bike. Let's swing a leg over it and see what it's like to ride. All right, guys, here we go. Mechanical key. Good job, KTM. Got a TFT color display here. HCU failure, not really sure what that means, but let's exec exit out of the menu here. We have the bike in track mode here. Track mode. Track mode is accessed by purchasing an additional upgrade. This bike has the $740 tech pack, which elevates its MSRP to 12000 Four hundred and some dollars, and that includes high-end track-enabled traction control, where you can adjust the slip coefficient in nine settings. We'll put it in four. You can also tailor the engine's throttle response. Street, sport, track. We're going to do street because I like that best. You can also disable wheelie control and enable launch control if you like. We're gonna ride it in this mode. We also have ABS set in the super moto setting. So front, the front wheel has ABS with cornering functionality, IMU powered cornering functionality, but the rear brake we can lock up so we can do slides. But the spike doesn't do super good slides, but we'll get that to that in a second. All right, ergonomically on this bike, KTM they did a nice job on the ergonomics. This motorcycle is still very slim between your legs, due in part to the the 890cc parallel twin. But I like how the handlebar position is a little bit more forward, a little bit lower, and the foot pegs are a little farther back. It makes for a more sporty riding position, but it's done done so tastefully. If you're a taller rider, you're gonna really like this bike just because it has so much room in the cockpit. That's why I've always really liked KTM street bikes and dirt bikes for that matter. Is they, when it comes to ergonomics, really no one, no company does it better than KTM. They always have the best ergonomics on any motorcycle. And this 890 Duke R continues that trend. Very comfortable when you want to be comfortable, yet. It's got sporty chops when it's time to be sporty. I also like how low the foot pegs are positioned. If you're a rider with long legs, you're gonna favor that too, yet when you have this thing laid over in the corner, the foot pegs don't drag. And away we go, guys. As part of the tech pack, this bike also includes an electronic up and down quick shifter. So we don't need to use the clutch to upshift or downshift. I really like that feature. Makes the motorcycle feel faster than what it is and it also greatly improves the stability of the chassis when you're wailing around corners and grabbing downshifts at lean.
407 pounds is what this motorcycle weighs. It's extremely light, extremely light with a full tank of gas with its 3.7 gallon fuel tank filled to the brim. God, this thing's a hoot to ride. This 890 Duke R is powered by a bigger bore, longer stroke version of the 790 Duke's engine, pushing displacement to 890 cc. Now, in addition to the wider bore, longer stroke, the cylinder head is different. It's got bigger valves, cam timings changed. Heck, even the engine cases have changed, says KTM. Also, it has a crankshaft, a heavier crankshaft, and that helps increase the torque feel of the engine. So, of course, the bigger stroke's gonna increase the torque feel, but so will the larger or heavier crankshaft. It also makes the engine feel way smoother. I can't believe how much smoother this engine feels compared to the 790 Duke. Now what's so neat about this engine configuration too is it benefits from an uneven firing order. And basically a lot of manufacturers are, are using that type of engine firing order on their parallel twins. And what that does is it gives the parallel twin a feel and characteristic like a V-twin. So it's got the shake, rattle and roll and torquey punchy feel and character of a V-twin yet you still benefit from the ultra compact packaging and manufacturing efficiency of building an inline two engine. And I like it. The character of this engine is much improved versus the 790 Duke. The 790 Duke felt just unfinished, unpolished, vibrated too much, just didn't feel as clean running as this thing. This thing feels like it's just made to run, made to gallop. Finally a turn, guys, and this KTM 890 Duke R eats up turns. We spent the last few days riding this motorcycle up in Palomar Mountain. If you're not familiar with Palomar Mountain, that's a very popular Southern California riding spot. And it's a road that has just miles and mi miles of just perfectly groomed asphalt turns. And this bike is just, I haven't ridden a more fun motorcycle up Palomar in a long time than this 890 Duke R. It just, it, it handles so sportingly, yet it, it, it's comfortable and it, the, just the whole package, like it's the perfect bike size. It has enough power to excite you, but not enough power to get away from you. So now we're riding on the historically bumpy road, guys. And while I like the suspension on this bike in a sporting environment, on the road, when you go over bumps, the suspension delivers a little bit of a rough ride. It's not terrible by any means, but it's not as supple as other motorcycles we've ridden recently. It's important to note that the shock absorber on this bike doesn't benefit from a linkage. It's direct mount between frame and swing arm. Suspension offers independent compression and rebound damping at the front. And then you have spring preload, high low speed compression and rebound damping at the rear. A lot of adjustability in the suspension here. I also like that the fork includes nice red swipers so you can monitor fork travel, help tune your suspension that way. The fork doesn't allow for spring preload adjustment. For whatever reason, KTM always, not always, but very often they like to exclude that feature on their street bikes. The 1290 Super Duke R finally added spring preload for 2020 and I really value the ability to adjust the fork spring preload. It's a big deal for me because it allows you to set up the ride height of the motorcycle. 
So I wish KTM would just add that feature to all its bikes. It's not a deal breaker on this thing, but you gotta have it. Love the character and feel of this engine and this quick shifter just makes riding so much fun. So I like the street throttle map setting the best. The track setting and sports setting are great too, especially in the corners. But when you're popping wheelies on this bike, the sport and track settings, they just make the throttle feel, feel strange. It's hard to modulate a wheelie. In street mode, it's much easier to control distance wheelie, so that's why I like it overall. And they're really not giving up that much in the corners. You still have decent throttle feel. It's maybe not quite as sharp and intimate feeling as sport and track, but it's not dull either. Cruise control. This 890 Duke R is not fitted with cruise control, hence why we're probably going a little fast. It's so hard to ride these motorcycles at the speed limit. They're so fun to ride. But for one, for folks who really want to be mindful of that, they could purchase cruise control as an accessory. This motorcycle is not fitted with that feature. Brakes. This 890 Duke R has larger diameter cross-drilled rotors up front. It also has Brembo's Stelima radial mount four-piston brake calipers. Not only do these calipers look awesome, but man, they tr deliver great power and great braking feel. And if that wasn't enough, KTM also fit Brembo's MCS style radial master cylinder. The MCS master cylinder allows the rider to adjust the lever ratio of the brakes. Right now we have the lever ratio in the most aggressive setting, 21 millimeter setting. And what that does is it makes for very sharp feeling brakes. You don't have to put a lot of lever input into the pet into the lever for the brakes to really bite. I like that. Conversely, if you're a newer rider and you want to dull the response slightly, you can select the 19 millimeter mode or the 20 millimeter mode. But I like the sharp feeling of the 21 millimeter mode. Of course, the brake lever and clutch lever, the position distance from the handlebar is adjustable, which is very nice. Good job, KTM. I like the brakes on this bike a lot. Mirrors. At a reasonable speed, there is definitely engine vibration. You can feel it through the handlebar and the foot pegs, but it's not off-putting. It's fun. It's the fun engine vibration. And it's not enough to cloud the, the view in the mirrors that bad. You go a little faster, though, and the mirrors start, start buzzing pretty, pretty good. So definitely at higher RPM, this engine has some buzz to it, but it's, it's a fun sporty motorcycle, so I actually like the buzz. The only problem is when you're going really fast, the mirrors are basically useless. I also don't like this like cheap style uh, double nut mirror lock system. I mean, a lot of motorcycle manufacturers use it, but it's just the mirrors come loose and it feels cheap. I mean, this is a 12,000 400 and some dollar motorcycle. It should have something better than this. Handlebar, you can actually adjust the position of this handlebar fore and aft. There's little threaded inserts in there, which is cool. You can also roll the bars forward or back with a Torx uh, socket. This bike rides on Michelin's Power Cup tire. And although it looks like a competition style tire it's street legal and man this michelin tire has they're awesome i haven't been a big fan of michelin's current sport bike tires in a long time i think the last time they made something really good was 2012 but this michelin power cup street tire is really making me believe in michelin again i can't believe how much grip these tires have and the feel they have pretty good feel Great grip, and they're just 
a really fun tire to, to whale on. Good job, Michelin. Electronics, guys. This bike has KTM's new MTC setup. And the MTC, the IMU powered MTC on this bike is just awesome. You can ride this bike insanely hard in the canyons and it won't bite you. I really like slip mode four overall. Four, you can still feel the electronics curtailing power just a little bit when you're really getting some, but it's not enough to really compromise drive off the corner. If you go up to slip level five though, you can actually feel the electronics curtail the acceleration a little bit more than I'd like. But of course, that's the beauty of this motorcycle is you can tune the slip coefficient to your liking between one and nine. So good job KTM on the electronics. You guys have been not doing so good at that for a long time, but finally you're getting it right. So good job. All LED, not all LED, but the headlamp and the tail lamp are LED on this motorcycle. And God, the headlight on this motorcycle is crazy bright. Crazy, crazy bright. If you ride at night, you're gonna love this bike. All right, guys, we're almost to the wheelie test. Let's see how she does. We have wheelie control disabled already. This bike integrates wheelie control, but you can turn it off if you have the track or tech pack. All right, guys, we'll go in the menu system right here. Wheelie controls off. We'll just double check. Anti-wheelie control off. Let's give her the beans, see what she does. Oh yeah, this thing wheelie is great. Street setting for optimum throttle response doing wheelies. I also really like the clutch. When you release the clutch, it's got really good feel. I don't like the slipper clutch on this bike though. I don't like it at all. That's the one miserable failure on this bike is the slipper clutch. It just doesn't, you have to be really mindful. So when you're when you're trying to back it in or do that kind of stuff, you have to make sure you don't fully release the clutch. You have to kind of hold it a little bit, which is counterintuitive to most bikes and most slipper clutches. Most good slipper clutches, you can just let the clutch, uh, let, let your hand off it and the slipper clutch will automatically deal with everything. It's the only one feature I really am not pleased with this on this bike. Everything else is super excellent. All right guys, there she is, KTM's 2020 Duke R. Oh, I really like this motorcycle. I love the styling of it. I love the improved handling dynamic, the, the punchiness of the engine. This is the middleweight Duke KTM should have always built. They should have just skipped over the 790 Duke. That motorcycle was not my favorite by any means. This thing is. So kudos to KTM for doing a very well thought out and well uh, executed set of upgrades on this 890 Duke R. All right, guys, let's do some Q&A, some Instagram Q&A, straight to the very top here. How does it compare to a Street Triple? That's a great question. I haven't ridden the new Street Triple recently, so I couldn't tell you, but I like this bike a lot. I probably like it more than the Street Triple based on the last time I rode the Street Triple, especially because it looks cool and the handling's insanely awesome and the engine has some good beans too and it's light very light is it blue no it's not blue it's this color how does the front end feel vague or on rails this bike in the corners is on rails you can ride this bike ridiculously hard and it's not going to bite you like other bikes will the combination of the michelin power cup tires the suspension and the dynamic of the engine and the traction control works great. This bike rides on rails. You can really wail on this thing around corners. It's awesome. Are those mirrors as serious in person as they look here? Uh, mirrors have good visibility at middle speeds, lower speeds, but we mentioned how the attachment clevis system isn't the most awesome. 
Ah, let's get to some good question. Grip level from the tires compared to the Maxxis 1s on the 790 Duke. These tires are incredible. They're probably going to wear out a little fast, but they are absolutely incredible. Good job, Michelin. More of an all-day rider or ride for a few corners and recover. You can ride this thing all day. I've been riding this thing a lot lately all day, and it's decently comfortable. Seat's a little bit uh, thin, but, you know, my... my Posterior wasn't really in discomfort. Ergonomics are set up really well for me. This is a pretty comfortable bike to ride. This motorcycle has the passenger foot pegs and seat removed, but when you buy this motorcycle, it comes with those components. So just keep that in mind, guys. But yeah, you can ride this bike every day. All right, guys, that's a quick review of KTM's 2020 890 Duke R. Would I buy this motorcycle? Well, for its $11,700 asking price, for only $1,000 more than the 790 Duke, you would be insane to buy the 790 Duke. 790 Duke's not that awesome of a motorcycle. 890 Duke R is an awesome motorcycle. So yes, I would buy this motorcycle. The added fee for the, the tech pack, this motorcycle is pushing $12,500. It's a lot of money for this kind of bike. I would but yet you still need that adjustable track slip control. If you don't have that or electronic quick shifter, you're not going to be loving life. So 12,500 bikes for that, for this thing. God, that's a lot of money, but God, this bike is very fun. And it, it's a, it's a very charismatic and awesome motorcycle if you like to ride in the canyon. So yes, I would buy it. All right, guys, make sure to check the link inside the description for our 2020 motorcycle rider study. We want to hear from you guys on what motorcycles mean to you. And if you like this video, make sure to give, a, give us a thumbs up. Check the notification bell in the upper right corner so you stay abreast of all of our content. And we'll see you guys next time.